So one of the really cool things about owning a Husqvarna or KTM, uh, new generation ones, and Gas Gas, obviously, uh, all part of the KTM group, um, and running WP suspension is that, you know, they make available through WP Pro Components a lot of those things that, you know, factory racers use, they're, they're available over the counter. I get a lot of questions about it all the time, and then uh, we're here with Steel from On Point, one of the, one of the leading WP authorised dealers uh, based down in, in Melbourne. I get asked a lot of questions about suspension, okay? Like, okay, I'm paying for a kit, and particularly at the moment, you know, Steel, we've obviously got this new 7500 closed cartridge kit, the, the Explore Pro, which is for the new 24 onwards. Close cartridge, range, yep. close cartridge enduro fork, yep, exactly. Yep. Uh, and also the shock bladder kit. And the people are like, cool, and they rattle off this stuff. Oh, it's got cone valve technology, but what is it? We're out here testing the, these products in a couple of um, Huskies back to back. Well, we thought we're still on hand, you know, with so much expertise. The challenge is going to be for him to actually sort of share with us what these components, the differences in the components, and what they're actually designed to do and how they work without going into the enormous wealth of knowledge that, that he has. Mate, let's start, let's start from the start. So. So you've got a you've got an exact cloak cartridge fork, right? In let's call it in your 2020 formal FE 350. I like the idea of us. I've heard cone valve technology. Let's start with the fork, right? So you can buy an Explore Pro 7500 kit. Hey, still, does that give me a cone valve fork? Does it take me almost, you know, down what what people have heard to the point where you've got a, you've got a cone valve fork? Just take us through it. Mate. Correct. So the. Um the, the biggest difference between the production fork now and the 7500 is the cone valve system. Biggest difference there is that the, the mid valve is essentially a, a cone tapered cone style which creates the dampening force in that mid valve yep. versus the, uh, where the exact closed car chamber fork is a ship stack. Yes. So you're just basically using a different form of method to control the, the oil. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Can, can you show us what yep. we're talking about here, you know? So basically, we've got the two mid valves out of the both forks. So that's the uh, production fork, which is the exact closed cartridge. And the mid valve is, goes up into the cartridge, right? Correct. So, so yes. the, the mid valve is what bypasses through the fluid when yes. the fork moves up and down. So wait on, like even like, okay, so that's, that's sitting in the fork leg? Correct, that, so yep. that sits in there. That moves up and down through the oil. Yes. Basically, by putting different cones or different shim stacks, we can control how much oil flow goes through that, which then gives us or gives the rider a different feel and different dampening characteristics. Yeah. And look, you've got you've got, obviously got three different sort of shapes cones. They're subtly different, but that makes a big change in the in the character of the fork. Correct. So yeah, basically, the tuning capabilities with the cone valve is that WP offer different tapered cones from the factory. It's essentially like us being able to reconfigure the shim stack to create again different feels or whether we want more hold up, less hold up. Instead of changing shims, we can change a cone valve. Change a cone valve. And you or, don't have distorted shims, one of the benefits, right? It is a massive benefit, yeah, because yeah, I know even some of our guys at high level, every 10 hours we have to replace, if they're not on a cone valve, they have to replace the shim stacks uh, in the mid valve because they get so distorted yep. that the fork ends up feeling soft after. And show us the other differences. I know the pressure spring that sits at the top of that cartridge, so it sits up at the top of here. The, the yep. pressure spring sits in here with the base valve behind it. You yep. want to sort of demonstrate the... Basically, both forks they're a closed cartridge technology and system, basically meaning that they're a pressurized unit, fully sealed internally. They are pressurized by these pressure springs. Both have base valves. It's sit in here, but that essentially. basically yes. sit in here. So yep. as that dampener rod displaces fluid, goes through the base valve and moves this pressure spring up and down through this three piston. So yep. Very similar. The difference is the, the 7500 kit has better anodizing qualities, billet base pistons and of course external preload adjustment. So essentially, pre when the closed cartridge fork came out, you had the Explore, Pro, uh, the Explore fork, yeah, open yeah. cartridge. So you put a 6500 kit, turned it into a closed cartridge kit. Right. That was a bit, you know, around two grand. Yeah. So for two and a half grand, now you've got, you start on a base with a more sophisticated closed cartridge yeah. fork and two and a half grand buys, you basically a cone valve. But we we're talking before, it's not technically an identical to a off the shelf 7548. I think that, that cone valve fork itself which is more so oriented toward motocross, right? I yeah, think you said correct. the lugs at the bottom were a bit different. Yeah, so the and lugs. The stanchions. Yeah, so the lugs on the um, on the full fork, you have a built lug, yeah. um, and then also you have a, a much heavier, thicker, straight tapered upper stanchion, which definitely gives a more rigid feel. So sometimes for you, you know your trail rider or even your hard enduro guys or most off-road guys, they will actually prefer the feel of the standard lugs so and a little standard bit more fork tubes. For getting yeah. a bit more compliant. So yeah. basically what we can do is we can turn standard fork into basically a, a cone, cone valve, valve. Yeah. with some added flex characteristics. 
All right, well, that's, okay, so that's the key differences with the fork. So it, it's all, it, it, you know, it's all internal. So yep. that's why it's really nice to be able to sort of see some of these, you know, yep. these differences and, um, you know, what actually comes in the kit. You can transfer your standard spring if it's the right rate sure. from your existing fork in there. Otherwise, a couple hundred bucks for, for a set of springs. Uh, and I think the kit comes with some preload spaces as well. Yep. Just, yep. Yeah, so if okay. you, you know, if your new fork springs are a little bit shorter, we, you can adjust the, the overall length with the, the supplied spaces. A lot of people focus on forks, but a lot of people don't focus on, on the shock, right? So, yeah. you know, I know as a suspension guy, you go probably don't do one mod, you know, without the other. Take us through this. So the, the shock bladder kit, $215 odd, I think. Yeah. Again, my understanding is, you, you know, you're moving from a piston, and I'm not talking the shock body itself, but my understanding is piston yeah. in the reservoir. Yep. to a bladder system which sort of reduces some of that stiction and just gives more compliance. That's the kind of idea, right? So basically the, the reservoir in a shock is works in the same aspect as the pressure spring of the fork. It's the nitrogen is used to pressurize the system so we reduce the risk of cavitation instead of this free piston. Basically, so that's the in stock, this, that's this stock is a standard range. unit. Yep. This free piston lives inside this body, yep. separates the oil from the nitrogen and when the shock compresses, this simply moves up and down under oil pressure. The disadvantage sometimes with these, it does add a lot of friction because you are trying to move. Just overcoming that stiction. Overcoming that fit. stiction. Because yes. yep. obviously we've got to seal the two, we've got to seal the fluid and the nitrogen. With with motocross and that, or supercross, sometimes this is, this is a really good system to use. But with a lot of like trail stuff and enduro, people tend to like the, the feel of the bladder. And yeah. the reason being is, is we have no stiction. All we're doing is we're compressing a bladder yeah. versus trying to move a big piston up and down a, in, a, in a body. So the, the compliance you get, gain from the bladder kit is definitely relates to rider feedback. So Let's just talk about that. Compliance, I think about small chattery bumps and the, and the wheel will stay in contact yep. with the ground, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, I think you get, you know, edge grip. I think, we you know, one of the first things we noticed, obviously with testing the thing was edge grip, it gave at both ends of the bike, but just yep. because it, it, it absorbs and processes those little bumps yeah. much more efficiently, right? Yeah, because it, yeah. it um, doesn't quite require as much force to get moving. It's something that definitely gets noticed on track. Mm. And it also helps keep the shock consistent. With moving parts, you can generate heat. Yes. Whereas this style does help keep temperatures down and things yeah. like that as well. Okay. And finally, I guess, mate, let's just put your sales hat on. What, what do people aim for? Like, what's everybody clamoring after? I think 7,500 kit's getting a pretty good reputation now because for suddenly at a more affordable price, you can take yourself to a cone valve, like, you know, yeah. factory racer, you know, set up, essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah like, obviously, before the, the exact closed cartridge fork come out, the, the 6,500 kit was was a very popular... It's like a motto, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like, you know, we are going out like lollipops, but um, <laughs> yeah. now with... Yeah, the, with the point of difference between the 7500 versus a production fork, but with the added benefit of having the cone valve system at a much cheaper rate of yeah. buying a full fork. Yeah, and so the upgrade's effectively half the price, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. And then you get the benefits of having like a fork that's maybe a little bit more compliant with flex. Yeah. They are definitely becoming very popular for those models. Some people really like to feel the cone valve. So yeah, they're, they're definitely making a good way into the market at the moment. So. Well, we've had the opportunity to be out here for a couple of days and, and test, and it's great to be, you know have uh, Steele on hand uh, with his uh, mobile trailer. Came all the way up here uh, from Melbourne to the uh, Southern Islands. Um, done some testing. We have some really interesting feedback from the guys. So stay tuned for that on the on the website. We're going to have that out uh, in the next uh, in the next few weeks as well.